Welcome to Hypnosis Health Info, I'm Roger Moore. One of the things that new Slender for Life weight loss clients will frequently talk about is how they eat their food too fast and, and I've written before in blog posts and, and I believe talked about in previous videos about uh, clients who shared stories with me of how they've inhaled a bowl of ice cream so fast they've gone back and had a second one uh, because they didn't get any satisfaction from the first one. And, and it actually had a conversation uh, with someone uh, yesterday uh, here in the Seattle uh, weight loss office uh, about that very topic. And, and so last night on the ferry uh, going back to Bainbridge Island, I was uh, searching through uh, the internet and just looking to see what was going on out there in the world and came across a, a story on Newswise that uh, was out of Cornell University and it was actually dated yesterday, uh, January 30th of 2013. And it's titled, Want to Lose Weight? Take a Bite and Wait. And it reads in part, if you're giving in to cravings for chocolate or other snacks, think smaller. Take a bite and wait. A new study by Cornell University researchers finds that eating smaller portions of commonly craved foods will satisfy a person just as well as a large portion. This re research supports the notion that eating for pleasure, hedonic hunger, is driven more by the availability of foods instead of the food already eaten. Just a bit satisfies, not magnifies, hunger and craving tendencies for snacks. The study found that, as expected, portion size has a direct impact on calorie intake, but it also discovered that portion size did not have a direct impact on the level of satisfaction of the person eating the snack. Researchers came to these conclusions after testing 104 adults who were given large and small portions of the same snack. Those who ate large portions consumed 77% more calories than those who ate small portions. Yet despite consuming substantially more calories, hunger pangs of people eating large portions decreased by the same amount as those eating small portions. In both conditions, craving tendencies were significantly decreased 15 minutes after eating. So how much chocolate would you need to be satisfied? Less than half as much as you think. If you want to control your weight, here's the secret. Take a bite and wait. After 15 minutes, all you remember in your head and in your stomach is that you had a tasty snack. Now folks, one of the things that, that uh, I love to do and this is generally a, a Saturday night type of activity uh, at home uh, with my wife is I'll get out uh, a really good dark chocolate and I'll break off a piece oh, about that big you know just slightly bigger than my, my thumbnail just uh, the, the, the kind of dark chocolate we buy doesn't come in squares but it's you know, kind of like what you'd expect a square to be and I'll have a little bit of wine about two fingers of wine in a glass and over the next hour or so, I will sip on that glass of wine and I'll nibble on that piece of chocolate. And it's one of those things where you just take a small bite and, and I'll put it in my mouth and, and just let it sit there. Don't, don't chew it, just kind of let it melt in my mouth and, and just totally savor the, the sensations and, and just allow the, the flavor to burst in my mouth. And yeah, after just that much chocolate over a period of time, I do feel totally satisfied and totally content. I had a special treat. I had very few calories. I had a piece of really, really good chocolate. We buy expensive chocolate, but the beauty of only eating that much once a week is it lasts a long time. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a very wonderful and very harmless uh, treat that uh, I use as, as just a, one of the joys and fun things in life to, to appreciate. And, but the beauty of, of eating slowly like that and savoring food and, and taking just a moment with it is you can do that with your regular meal.
so, and I know I've talked about this before, both in posts and in videos, but is to learn to eat mindfully, to eat consciously, to only eat with the TV off, to only eat when you're seated, to eat at a special area, a designated eating area, whether it's the kitchen counter or the kitchen table or the dining room table, <clears throat> maybe light some, cal uh, some candles, uh, put on some, some favorite music, look out the window, whatever works for you. And just become aware of, of your butt in the chair. Aware of your feet in the floor. Aware of your breath. And take a moment and notice that plate of food. Notice the colors, the shapes, the textures, the aromas of the food, the scratches in the plate. Pick up your fork. Is it warm? Is it cold? And then take that, that fork and, and put it into your mashed potatoes and into your peas. And as you lift that fork full of food, be aware of, of how your bicep contracts and what it's like to put a fork full of food in your mouth and take the fork out and set it down. And just allow yourself to totally appreciate the flavors, the textures of that food and, and to chew the food. You don't just swallow mashed potatoes, chew them. Notice how, how the textures change. Notice how the flavors change as you chew. Become aware of the black pepper in there and the, the bittersweet taste of the peas and then what it's like to swallow. And hopefully you have the luxury of eating with somebody. And so you talk with them, you commune with them, you talk, you, you laugh, you giggle, you listen, and you pick up your fork and take another bite. And again, eat it slowly, eat it consciously, and just totally allow yourself to sensate, to be in that moment, to taste all the flavors and textures. And one of the things that I always like to do too, uh, generally before I take my first bite, is to take a moment and give thanks. Thanking uh, the, the people who are involved in the, in the creation of this food, the farmers, the growers, uh, the people that, that harvested the food, that cleansed it, that packaged it, did any processing with it, froze it, or, or got it ready to, uh, to, for the supermarket or the farmer's market, uh, for my wife or whoever cooked the food or the restaurant worker that cooked the food, and, and to give thanks for, for the abundance that we have and appreciation to those, all those involved in this growth and preparation. But again, the point here is to eat slowly eat mindfully, to eat consciously, to totally savor each and every bite. And it is amazing how little food that I can eat and be totally satisfied, uh, feel like I have enough fuel in my body, stop eating and be totally content, and also not be hungry an hour later. It really doesn't take that much food, particularly when you eat slowly, eat consciously, eat mindfully. So, I encourage you to try this, to experiment with yourself, experiment with your family of learning to slow down, learning to talk, learning to commune, learning to appreciate the colors, the textures, the flavors, the aromas of the food. Uh, learn to uh, enjoy the tastes and, and just to be in that moment, aware of your breath, aware of your body. And the other way that, that I've learned to use this and have been teaching uh, my weight loss hypnosis clients is how to actually do all this in your head and never even have to taste the food. Uh, just um, actually it was this last Monday also. I was in a bakery on Bainbridge Island with one of my daughter-in-laws. And I'm being there, you know, at the, in the line and, and I saw these, uh, they're kind of, they look kind of like a cinnamon roll, but they're not. They're, they're, a, yeah, they're a breaded roll, they're whole wheat, and um, there's no frosting or gooey stuff on them. They're loaded with sugar, there's a lot of cinnamon there, and there's fruit that's uh, you know, uh, baked into, into this roll. And about a year or so ago I had one, it was really, really good, and, and I actually shared one with a, with a couple other people, and, and I totally enjoyed it. And so as I was standing there lying and waiting for my cup of coffee, uh, I was looking at those and I remembered how good they were and the thought crossed my mind about having one and, and how enjoyable it would be. And, but then I also checked in and went, well, 
it wasn't that long ago that you ate, you're not hungry, and dinner's going to be in about three hours, so um, not hungry, and you're going to be eating not that far down the road, and, and if you do get hungry between now and dinner, you could always have a banana, and if you ate that, it would be way too much, it would be over the top, and I knew she wouldn't want any of it, and, and so as I stood there in line waiting to order my coffee, um, I just allowed myself to, to remember the smell of that roll, the smell of the cinnamon. And <clears throat> I remembered biting into to that roll and, and the whole wheat and, be, and, the, and the various fruits that are in there and to, to chew it, to taste it, to savor it, to swallow it. And that was all in my mind. And I hadn't made up my mind yet what I was going to order it or whether I was going to order it or not. But I got up there to the uh, cashier and uh, to place my order and all I ordered was the cup of coffee and it was kind of a fleeting thought of should I order that and, and in my head what I realized is I'd already eaten it, I had already totally appreciated it, I had totally enjoyed it simply by imagining it, I didn't have to eat it. And so I got my coffee and uh, went and had a great uh, time with, with my daughter-in-law, we sat there and talked for over an hour and then I went back to the office and saw more clients and, and home for dinner. That's the power that when, when you're being mindful, when you're being present, being conscious, those are the things that you can do uh, to keep yourself in, in a healthy place. To eat healthy, to eat consciously, to eat mindfully, to achieve your healthy ideal weight or maintain a healthy ideal weight. And I teach all my clients here at Slender for Life at Seattle Weight Loss and Bainbridge Island Weight Loss self-hypnosis. And, and I teach it in such a way that you learn to give yourself suggestions, take yourself deeply relaxed, and bring yourself back up in one minute. So that way it becomes a very powerful and very functional tool that you can use anywhere and everywhere. And it truly is all about putting you back in control of you. It's not about being controlled by someone. In fact, hypnosis is the ultimate display of self-control. Instead of that cinnamon roll having control of me or a piece of chocolate or anything else, it truly is about you taking control of you. So take a look at all the tools and, and resources here at, at slenderforlife.com and hypnosishealthinfo.com. Look up there, particularly in the orange menu bar, at Hypnosis Health Info and at Self Hypnosis. And, you know, I have clients around the world, not only here in the Medical Dental Building in downtown Seattle and on Bainbridge Island in my office there or over in Forks, but uh, thanks to Skype, I have clients around the world and, and in several different states here in the U.S. And so for wherever you are, you and I together can create a program of, uh, that would support you in achieving your goals. So give me a call at 206-903-1232 or send me an email, roger at hypnosishealthinfo.com and let me know how to support you. I'm Roger Moore and this is Hypnosis Health Info.